Hello, welcome again to the lecture series on automobile engineering. In the last two sessions, we have discussed about automotive suspension system. So we continue our discussion on suspension system. In this session, let us discuss about passive and active suspension system. So first question is, what do you mean by passive suspension system? So you know that I represent the suspension. Suppose this is the sprung mass and this is the unsprung mass and between these I showed the suspension. Right. And I call this as KT tire, sus tire stiffness. This I called it as KS suspension stiffness and this I called it as suspension damping. So when we design the suspension system, of course we take many factors into considerations. One of the main factors that we take into consideration is the natural frequency of the sprung mass. It should be, it is given by 1 by 2 pi, say root of Ks, suspension stiffness divided by sprung mass. And we'll try to fix this value approximately equal to 1 hertz. So then we arrive at the Ks value. And uh, design a mechanical spring accordingly. So now its value is fixed. So many kilo newton per meter. Okay. But in reality, you see, I must have designed this for a laden condition. That is loaded condition. By chance mass varies, means say unladen condition. Or there is less mass, definitely this value will change, frequency will change. So resonance frequency will change. So then the comfort levels will change. These are the kind of problem we will face with the fixed value of Ks. It is desirable depending on the driving conditions that if you can vary the value of Ks, we can acquire, we can achieve the required occupant comfort in a car. Let us consider the damping. So normally I said we will use a dual rate damper. As I mentioned there are two strokes that is bounce that is expansion jones that is compression. I think I have messed it up in the previous video. I would have said other way. I think this is correct jones and this is bounce. Okay. During this stroke will have a damping value of say 0.2 this will have a damping value of 0.4 but let us see depending on the condition even the damping value must change for example your car is running on a level road level road
So when it is running on a level road, it is necessary that we make the suspension soft. Otherwise, this will not reciprocate at all and dissipate the energy and that may create a lot of uncomfort. So this has to do that even the spring has to be soft. Correct. Now the question is like you are climbing up. So it needs to be hard. Again, it is you are climbing down, you are running at a particular speed. If it is too hard, then the suspension will not respond. Then it may lose the road holding. That time it may become, say, medium. Medium. Okay, that is damping coefficient and case must be something different. It should not be too hard like this. It is desirable that we change KS value, so also the damping value depending on our requirement. But in our traditional suspension system, they remain constant. Such a system, we call it as a passive suspension system. Correct. So that's what exactly I said, like, you know, during the Jones stroke, you see here, should be around 0.2, this should be around bone, three bone stroke or bone stroke, should be at no 0.4, that's how the damping value will be. And you know, mainly the damping which I have explained earlier, because of this here, so here we'll have orifices. When the oil passes through these orifices, then only the dissipative effect is created, which I have explained earlier with the help of Newton's law of viscosity. So the behavior of these or the characteristics of this are shown here air force into velocity you know damping coefficient is given by damping force by piston velocity z dot so this is force this is velocity here characteristic a if you see at slow piston rod speed, fluid passes through a predetermined orifice area in the valve seat. Valve, valve seat is the predetermined area. So here, force versus velocity character, you, you can find this. Low velocity, high force damping is very large here at low speeds slow speeds you can find very large damping because this if you look at measure the gradient this force and the velocity velocities are small force is large damping coefficient is large and uh, other one if you look at the B, at medium rod speed, fluid is controlled by discs which act as flat blow off springs. The characteristic is shown like this. Again, very, very low speed, the damping coefficient is large. But as the speed increases, damping coefficient almost becomes very, very small, right? That is the thing. So C, at high speed, the fluid is controlled by the RFI slot area in the valve seat here and this is the characteristic you get almost a linear characteristic like this. So depending on the speed this is behaving and you get a different velocities like you know you can find out the damping coefficient. Probably the medium speed you can see here, it is something this way. 
other it is working almost linearly with velocity the damping coefficient value okay that's how it works so now the question is look at this now we have as i mentioned consider our model okay right sir if you consider our model this is our kt and this is our ks so this ratio is nothing but kt by ks this kt by ks ratio is small means this is hard spring as this value increases this means it is soft spring okay now here rms vertical acceleration of a sprung mass this acceleration i am talking about sprung mass vertical acceleration versus suspension travel these are given for different values of tire and stiffness so like suspension tire stiffness by suspension stiffness you can see here when the rms suspension travel is low then the vertical accelerations are high as you go on increasing this this is coming down the accelerations are coming down better now <coughs> but again suspension travel is larger then again acceleration increases this how you can find the characteristic so for this given tenness a uh, tire and tire stiffness by suspension stiffness probably this lower vertical acceleration you can find in this region so lower the vertical acceleration better the reason is the force transmitted to the occupant if you want to find let us say the mass of the occupant and the acceleration is subjected to if this acceleration is very high you will be subjected to very high force so that means to say definitely it creates lot of uncomfort as an impact okay so if i can make spring suspension spring softer it is coming down coming down coming down like this but you can see here increasing damping you are increasing the damping also so you are making the spring softer and probably increasing the damping means damping value you are increasing definitely response delay will increase okay so so somewhat this becomes a kind of usable range so depending on road condition you might have to take this position or take this or take this like this and accordingly adjust the damping value and maintain your maintain as far as possible low rms vertical acceleration values so now the question is can we further decrease this correct these are all the questions come like this so that the acceleration is minimum comfortable will be very high
Now, if we can vary the the stiffness ratio, if I can vary the damping, then I can achieve the required result. Let us say, what are the damping requirements? Damping requirements. Here I have written control objectives, damping force, front and rear, divided by rear. Front by rear. Roll. Roll reduction for quick steering operation. Hard, hard. So, if you see the front view, roll happens about x axis. This is the x axis of the vehicle. When you steer it, this is outside, this is inside. There will be large lateral accelerations. This is steering. Then there will be load transfer like this. So, if you take the suspension left, and right, correct, see here, this is the axis, this way it will be there. So you want to create some kind of anti-roll effect. It is better that we increase the stiffness, increase the damping, like this. So it means to say, you move in the curve somewhere, you know, here. So you require hard heart. Similarly, when you are pitching, you see here again, if you look at the side view of the car, This is Y axis, this one is X axis, again you say front suspension and the rear suspension, okay. So this is braking, that time load gets transferred like this. So this will dive. Correct. So you want to avoid that. You should create reaction like this. It should be hard. Okay. Reduction of pitching when acceleration is same idea like when accelerating. When accelerating, load gets transferred like this. Okay. So this is what is necessary. Sorry, this kind of thing. Bouncing, that means vertical movement. Okay, vertical movement. So it is necessary, otherwise we want to reduce the acceleration. So keep soft. Road holding. So road holding in the sense, right? Let us say. Something when the vehicle is here, the whole suspension will be in the compression state. Correct. If the vehicle is moving, then the suspension what we have here, that should that is spring and a damper, respond fast and be in touch. The wheel should be in touch with the contour. If I make it too hard, it may not respond. What do we mean by that is? Suppose you have a system, I model it and study its second order response. Suppose it responds like this. You see here, this is response versus time. Okay. So this time will be shorter. 
if i make this damping very high then it may dance respond like this then it is going to be too much turn so road holding will not be there then the wheel take too much of time to touch the ground it will be in the air for some time so that's why you have to be careful we have to make it you know softer road holding performance it is given over here medium by medium so these are stability improvement at high speed medium and soft front medium and here in the back soft like this so there is question of what it means is like you know under steering or over steering whatever can happen like this so depending on the condition <coughs> the values should change so that is the need for active or active suspension system but in the present we have two types of design one is called semi active and the one other one is called active as i said there are two things here stiffness and damping in a semi active suspension we will try to change on the damping coefficient keeping stiffness same in the active suspension is basically some of these two forces suspension as well as stiffness force that itself we control okay this is what we call it as semi active suspension and active suspension so we use a set of sensor systems to predict the road condition and uh, at what time the vehicle may go and hit that obstacle all these things we can predict means we sense this and send it to microcontroller the microcontroller as per the program logic it will decide this then it will make a decision based on that what should be the damping value of that and changes the damping coefficient of this shock absorber so that's what happens in a semi active suspension system but it is not going to work on the stiffness of the spring here no we decide what should be the force and accordingly the force is control okay this is just basic principle now you see here you have a vehicle steering angle so when you steer the vehicle it will indicate from that that steering input is given here to the ecu then it understand the intention of the driver in which direction the wheel is or the vehicle is heading to vehicle speed will give an idea lift drive whatever vehicle speed gives you in what time this wheels may go and and hit that you know obstacle or conditions then whether you are braking or not correct whether you are accelerating so all these kind of inputs are given so that the ecu electronic control unit as per the logic can calculate what should be the you now damping or damping and stiffness value accordingly it can send signal to each one of the suspension system correct 
that is the idea it is a, each one of the suspension system it can send to maintain the required condition imagine your vehicle is running with something like 100 kilometers per hour and what the time available for sensing processing sending the signal and activating the system okay it all should happen that is the way the control system needs to be designed already i mentioned this is the usable range if i use active suspension i can reduce the range correct very very low rms accelerations can be maintained So this already I told you how the damping effect happens in the damping coefficient model. So some of the many technologies are available to do to vary the damping coefficient depending on requirement. Okay, one of them is your magnetorheological fluid. So they call it as MR fluid. Basically MR fluid is prepared using iron particles of 3 to 5 micron size and there will be a carrier liquid is hydrocarbon oil and also they put the additives to avoid the settling down of the iron particles they all mix like this and you will get the magnetorheological fluid it is a special way of preparing. Now, what exactly happens is that the viscosity of this fluid can be varied by passing a current. So, in this fluid, fluid, sorry, fluid, when we pass the current, when we pass the current, its viscosity can be varied. Rheology. Initially in the liquid state, as the current passes through this, around, car, around this conductor, a magnetic field will be created and that magnetic field will align the particles. How closely it will bring the particles, how it aligns depending on the reality changes. And that change in turn depends on the current. By controlling the current, it is possible to control the reality of this. So this has become very, very popular nowadays. This they use in car suspension, seismic protection of building cable state building, household application like washing, prosthetic knees, artificial muscles, all these applications they use has become very, very popular. Okay, even people are thinking about using in brakes, hydraulic valves, okay, gun recoil protection and so on. This is what I said earlier, you can, passing the current, you can align this you take consider your conventional damper here you have the rheological fluid suppose you have the electromagnetic coils over here if you pass the current based on the current value the rheology of this changes so that the way the piston moves through this so as I said, damping coefficient is forced by velocity. If this viscosity increases, force increases and damping coefficient also changes. So like this, if you align more and more and you can go on making it very, very hard. If you reduce the current, you know, we can reduce the viscosity also. But where to keep the coil? There are so many ways of doing it. Some people keep the coil here itself so that as it passes 
<coughs> rheology of the fluid can change accordingly damping coefficient can change so these are some of the work done how exactly when the current passes through this coil the magnetic field changes accordingly the particles get aligned and this is force versus velocity characteristic for different current values so you can see here you have the force value here versus velocity value here correct at any point you can find the damping coefficient damping coefficient of this so you can look at the youtube videos many are available understand how exactly mr fluid damper works so you can connect it to all the four wheels like this here mr fluid damper mr fluid damper front rear and all that okay now the question is like you can use various sensor systems like speed sensor steering position sensor supersonic sensor since the steering sensor will give you in which direction your vehicle is heading to from speed sensor i can make out at what time what is the time available for this wheel to go and hit that obstacle from supersonic sensor i can find out the distance of that and not only that the shape of that also i can get an idea so once we get all this ideas from the sensor and this sensor information is given to control unit correct control unit i'll give this of course then this 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 is a process let me not get into the analog signal conversion and then it is becoming digital signals and kind of thing then these have to actuate the required actuators okay these signals will go and actuate decide what should be the current to be supplied correct what current should go to this and accordingly whether depending on the table which had explained depending on the condition they can increase change the rheology of these and make hard soft medium depending on the requirement as you have seen in the characteristic the current value changes the damping coefficient changes so there is another technology that is available semi active suspension as you have said like it all depends upon the rfis so if you can control the rfis depending on my requirement the c value i can change so i use solenoid systems to vary this position valve stem position and accordingly i'll open this rfis you can see here this type is the most most economic and basic type of semi active suspension consists of a solenoid valve which alters the flow of hydraulic medium inside the shock absorber therefore changing the damping characteristic okay the solenoid are wired to the controlling computer which sends them commands depending on the control or varying the rfi size where is the damping coefficient so this is what happens here so how exactly solenoid valve semi active suspension works that is also such videos again available on youtube request you to type this keyword and watch the video so now instead of this only varying damping can we vary the complete force itself that is stiffness force plus damping force together that is what we call it as active suspension technologies there are many such technologies available one of them is hydro pneumatic here you can have a liquid 
a hydraulic fluid right <coughs> and hydraulic oil oil you can have here you can have air compressed air <coughs> by varying the air pressure also by airing the this oil pressure we can always vary the force to be imparted that's the main thing so sensors see the road condition based on the road condition cpu calculates what should be the suspension force to be generated accordingly suspension force is generated here suppose you require you know this should be very hard pump in more oil then this will become hard pump out oil here then this will become this will this air will expand this will become soft so that way we can go on varying this okay so you must have seen many vehicles have this hydraulic ride height adjusting systems you can see in this right moment you have put a load over here this will go down okay you can see here it is going down it has gone down only thing is you have to lift it up so to lift it up what is that you have to do is right pump in oil okay so it can lift this one so here now the question is it has to be made less hard like this so you can see here it is going up it will become you know so you are pulling this up moment i make this you know reduce the oil pressure over here it will go up like this <laughs> i think i explained it a wrong way the correct one is you see here let me read out height character 3 admits hydraulic fluid which yeah it will push this way it will increase the length lengthens the strut and raises the vehicle to its normal right height okay right so sorry for the you know wrong explanation okay how hydraulic pneumatic sus hydro pneumatic suspension works you can see from this video there is what you can call it as air suspension control also we have you see here for each wheel i have a compressed air supply system like this wheel. okay So depending on the requirement which should become soft or which should become hard you can see here uh, you have throttle position sensor to know you are accelerating or de-accelerating steering sensor you know direction vehicle speed as I've already mentioned you can find out how far the obstacle is okay so all these are there these are all given to the ecu this data based on that data either it will supply air to this actuator or remove the air you can see that a cylinder system everywhere here you can see okay by supplying the air i can raise this removing the air i can lower this okay for that i have the valves whether to supply air or remove the air 
and also depending on what ride height I should manage, all these facilities are available with this. Okay, so this kind of active suspension technologies are also used. I am not talking very much in detail, probably from the sketch itself, you can understand this working of the system. That's the reason why I am not very much dealing in detail because you see you can also understand there is an air compressor here then air is dried then the dry air comes out here correct then from here you can go to the front wheels you can supply the air so also you can supply the air to the rear wheels correct either you supply the air or release the air so depending on the suspension heights can be adjusted that's what it means Okay, how air suspension works. Now you understand this, how roll control is done in this case. You know, there is a roll center. And of course, you have the centrifugal force. Then this whole thing is going to roll like this. So you need to create anti-roll effect. So increase this force you see here and this force into center of gravity distance. So also this one, this if you make it hard, it will not stretch back. So it will also pull in this direction. So that way making this air supplying to this, releasing the air or in the opposite direction supplying the air, we can hold this system horizontal. We can completely control a row. So also the pitch, correct, suppose assume that you are braking this vehicle. So load gets transferred to the front, correct, then it is pitching. So immediately you need to create a reaction like this. Make this hard or increase the pressure in a pneumatic system. This force and this distance will create a Dark. So also you do it in the opposite direction. You create this and you can keep the system horizontal. That's how we can control the pitch and you can control the roll. So also you can control the bones. This diagram shows a power spectral density means the total energy that is available in the spectrum. Okay. The energy is more, it will lead to more uncomfort. Energy is less, better. So cars with conventional suspension system, you can see here in this frequency range, correct, which is not, these are the right region. That's what it is. You should, and this is the one which creates more uncomfort. You see here in a conventional system and all that thing, this is what you can see. But a car with a hydraulic active suspension system, this can be very much reduced. The acceleration values can be very much reduced. So it means to say you can operate somewhere, somewhere this rich low acceleration, RMS acceleration values. Okay, so that way you can make things comfortable and definitely occupants will enjoy the vehicle right. Okay, and you can see here these are the characters roll angle versus right turn acceleration or left turn acceleration. So conventional car this is the roll angle that you experience but if you have active suspension system these are the kind of roll angles so suppose 0.4 is the g value then you can see here this is what you can call it as a roll angle that you experience maybe less than one degree but if at all if you take conventional domestic cars or whatever it is this can be as high as 2.3 to 4 that is the thing so then you see the person who is sitting over here you know he'll be 
like this subjected to rolling rolling frequency then there is a roll frequency and if this roll frequency again it is very much greater than maybe 1.5 hertz it will definitely he feels very very uncomfortable same thing if you pitches more than pitch frequency is more than 1.5 hertz then also the occupant will be very very uncomfortable so the whole idea is reduce this right correct those frequencies or isolate those frequencies okay that is the whole idea behind us so that gives you basically a technology that gives you a clear picture of the advantages of semi-active and active suspension system over conventional passive systems however design of these things we talk about how to design all these things in uh, vehicle control systems we talk about very much in detail okay so interested people how exactly all these things work how to design you can study automotive electronics textbooks and learn this okay automotive electronics so here the idea is of this course just to give these characteristics in those courses i think i have dealt very much in detail about this okay now thank you very much i hope you have understood the basic concepts of suspension system so that completes the lecture on suspension in the next video i'll be discussing with discussing another topic till then thank you very much